Okay, so we'll then we'll go on the more likely than not, and we're just now hitting 630, so. Tina, you just need to give me a, when you think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. All right, well then we'll go ahead and we'll call to order at 630 just so that we can get underway because I know everybody's got plenty, plenty on the plates uh, to get done. Up oh, And hey, that was just like I summoned her magically out of, out of the internet ether. So with that in mind, um, if we can go ahead and, and we'll just do it again, alphabetical order roll call, please. All right, Christina Barron's present. Good morning, I go. Steve yeah, I think she, mm -hmm. All right, Emily, yeah, you did totally mute, All right? So I'm gonna hear, I'm just gonna, I actually could, Christina, you've got control of the meeting, so I can't unmute people. Hello, uh, me, I'm here, Emily Lonto. Maureen Terrell. And Tracy Wascom. All right, so with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead just to do this so that we can, we've got our roll call, that's all situated. And from there, we need to go ahead and uh, consent the agenda. Um, and so I guess everybody, well, again, y'all had it uh, a handful of days ago and it's the, whether or not y'all, unless there's any things that might need to be added or um, amended in terms of the agenda. And if not, if we can get a motion to approve it. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right, so uh, it doesn't look like or sound like we have any discussion. So all those in favor, we'll just do the full hand raise. We're good, outstanding. So that is gonna be what is on our docket today. Maureen sent out our minutes. Uh, hopefully folks had a chance to look things over. Um, I can scroll down through this, but again, um, folks should have at least had a little bit of time to make through it. It's pretty concise and tidily done as per usual. Um, so again, folks, Y'all can, uh, if you see anything just here in the general pass by, that's fantastic. Otherwise, we can get a motion to approve the minutes as they stand. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right. With that, all those in favor, let's hear an aye aye. If not, you know the rules. Perfect. Off we who, go. Can I just ask who seconded? I couldn't tell. Emily did. Oh, Mr. Linnea, no, Linnea did. Linnea, did. okay, thanks. Linnea, okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna close that down. So with that, um, I think we at least, we have public comment. Um, Tina had passed on a letter that had been shared to her as part of the public comment. Unfortunately, it is, it's, it's a wonderfully thorough, but very, very long letter. So it will exceed the three minutes that are allocated for public comment. So I think Tina, you were gonna summarize some critical parts of that since we have, we have a committee have read it, um, but so at least a portion of it is part of the public record. Okay. Just one second. I had it on my computer screen and now here it is. Okay. Um, I will skip over the uh, introduction. It is a very long uh, letter and um, there are three minutes for public comment. So we'll see as far as I get in the letter. Um, <clears throat> All right, and since we're, I'm gonna stop my share since we're we're reading, so. Okay, Native <laughs> Anishinaabe sculpture. Um, in relation to this project, you revealed to me an expressed desire to get the permit to have it somewhere near the lake, hopefully along Lakeshore Drive. This is brilliant. I feel a good spot would be in the middle of the newest roundabout with an eye on getting a sculpture series up and running for each of the roundabouts that aren't currently inhabited by plants and wildflowers, landscaped by the city or higher traffic areas such as these on the highway. That still leaves two on Wright Street, the newest behind the dome, one in, the prog one in progress on Lakeshore going to Presque Isle and one on 4th and Presque in front of NMU admin building. That is five. Each location of course offers different views, plenty of real estate to safely install a statue or sculpture. 
and there's a surplus of sculpture artists in around the area. It's a good initiative to spearhead because it is low impact, high vis visibility piece of public art, which can easier uh, be easier to introduce and warm people to public art as it should be. More or less inconsequential to your everyday business. It's just something to be seen that adds a little extra to your commute. Um, artists that come to mind, uh, he mentions Dale Wedig uh, and also uh, Lakin and Land. Spring surplus artist stipends. I truly, truly believe the only way to go about these prospective projects is to find your artist, find your spot and unleash them. Trust these artists, trust these spots and the art will flow freely and beautifully. I'm a staunch believer that we do not need to create a nature or history inspired art just because that is our surroundings and those are some of our demographics. Our public pieces can be abstract, they can be surreal, they can be random, obscure, and they can be trees, birds, and a lake, but just trust the artist. We don't need to be in charge of everything as a collective for arts in town. The responsibility should be focused on the bureaucracy and politics behind getting these projects going, finding spaces, preparing everything for the artist so that all the artist needs to worry about is creating and making. Um, Spots to keep in mind, uh, Graverett Elementary School, um, the old wing of the Delft Theater, large wall overlooking private parking lots from Getz's Clothiers, and 200 North 3rd, uh, completely brick wall, three to four windows. Um, and that must be where the Donkers building is. Um, I didn't go into to a lot of detail, this, uh, J this uh, public comment is by Jacob Darner, um, Marquette resident. And everyone should have a copy of this. Does that satisfy, Tracy? I think that, I mean, given the time period and given, I think that at least gets us into the spirit of, of what we can do with the time frame and the parameters that we're allowed to do in terms of public comment. So I think that at least gives us a general sense and has a good public record of a summary of what it was that Jacob was trying to communicate to us. Then again, all of us as committee members have copies of that letter and had time to actually read it very thoroughly um, and consider what was presented. Okay. And it doesn't look like from anybody on the outside, we have any additional sort of external public comment that is happening. Correct. Okay. So with that, uh, that brings us to the chair report. Um, I don't, we're in the midst of projects and those are going to get reported on in old business. So I did, um, I at least did want to at least address to, because I had time to look over Jacob's letter. Um, and I think he does bring up a lot of really good points, but I also want to make sure um, on behalf of MPAC that we address a few things also. Specifically, uh, the NEA grant and the indigenous work, which of course that's a huge part of why we committed the $30,000 on our end and try and getting additional matching funds for that as part of the NEA Our Town grant. And I think we can certainly consider that roundabout as a possibility, but I'm not gonna speak on behalf of all of us, but I'll certainly speak as the chair. I think whatever decision is made about that location needs to be actually driven very directly by an indigenous voice and at least some in, like people who are being honored by this work that they need to have a say in this process. And I know that Tina, you've already been in communication with Martin Reinhardt and Judd Sojourn. And that may only be just the beginning of the group of people who come together to help us identify a location on the cultural trail for that. So I wanna make sure that, while well, I think there's lots of great ideas that we can consider that if the spirit of that work is to indeed honor the indigenous people of our community, that they need to have a voice in where that location actually is. And um, we wanna make sure that that is definitely happening. I also, like as a person and in, in the best case scenario, I certainly think the idea of roundabout sculpture is really interesting. I have some real like safety concerns about the possibility of that, both for people using the roundabouts in terms of uh, lines of sight, as well as the sculpture itself. Like, is it gonna get snow pushed on it? Are we gonna have to deal with artist work being damaged? And then we, we basically like dishonored the artist because we put their work in a position to be damaged. So it doesn't mean that we don't think about that, but I think there's a lot of other there's a lot of other concerns that we have to take into account, like if we are to pursue a project like that, um, whether it's the kind of work that is chosen, is it more ephemeral so that it can come down in winter so that we don't have to worry about lines of sight when there's a blizzard and people running up over the top of a roundabout in the winter time and actually crashing through a work of art and either hurting themselves or literally damaging um, the work that was created 
to be a celebration of what artists can do. I like, um, it's nice that he mentioned that artist led are the, the artist grants. We had that on the docket of things to talk about even this evening, whatever additional funds that we didn't use as part of the bike path project were specifically slated for those artist led neighborhood projects. And the point there I think is really, is critical. Like, yeah, let's set artists loose on things. But I also know that we need to make sure that we're looking at, at locations that we have the ability and the capacity to facilitate public art on. Like we don't get to choose to put public art on private property. We can help enable projects that are in partnership with people that we are building those collective sort of prompts for, for lack of a better phrase. But I know that it's also important that we as a committee don't overstep our bounds at what we're able to do. We're here to facilitate public art and we're here to enable it to occur, but we are not an authoritarian body that gets to dictate the kind of public art that happens in Marquette, like one way or the other. I think we need to uh, be sensitive to, we can help people who they've got these great ideas and they wanna, like if Jacob wants to work with Graver, yeah, let's see what we can do to help make that happen. But to dictate that uh, project, I think we need to be careful about what properties we're, we're working with so that we do, what we have been asked to do and what we actually have permission to do in the community. Cause yeah, I want more art everywhere too. I think that's like exactly what, why it's why we're all here, right? On this committee in the first place. So, but otherwise I think that was just it. So I think there's some good things to consider there. I also think we want some stuff to um, be sensitive to as we look forward to future projects and sort of keep things in mind that uh, ensure that we are doing the best for the community and know that we're not just duplicating work that we've seen before, which is exactly why we undertook the projects that we did. The bike path project was there wasn't something like that in Marquette. Um, and how do we respond to COVID and get something where we're not waiting another year to do a project in the community, right? Something that was manageable in that time frame. It's the same reason that Emily brought up the idea of those artist-led neighborhood projects. Let's do something that hasn't been done before. And it's the same reason that that Queen City Courts project was done. Let's move art that it that is in our community off of Lakeshore, right? Let's find another location and think about the different ways that we can integrate art into the community so it isn't just always a memorial to someone. So I hope that while it might not necessarily be exactly what everybody wants us to be doing, um, that people can see that their motivations for doing it are genuinely in trying to introduce art in as many different ways as possible. It's just COVID of course kind of got in the way of some of these projects happening as quickly as any of us would have liked. And that's about all I have to say in terms of a report. So I turn it over to you, Tina, as the manager report. Yeah, so I'm just going to speak very briefly. Um, the uh, biggest thing to report on is the bike path, but that's on our agenda to wrap up. So mm -hmm. I'll save that for the agenda. Uh, I just submitted a uh, grant request to the Michigan uh, Heritage, Michigan Native American Heritage Fund um, for $115,000 uh, for the cultural trail, which would also go towards public art, interpretive signage, um, and uh, curriculum for the trail. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I thought anything added to the public art uh, budget would be wonderful. Um, we got a lot of great support uh, from Native Studies. Martin uh, Reinhardt, Dr. Martin Reinhardt wrote a fabulous letter in support of public art um, inspired by Anishinaabe culture and heritage, interpretive signage, and the curriculum that would go along with it. So um, that was the big focus right after the bike path project. We also hired uh, someone, they haven't started yet, but we hired a new part-time uh, marketing and promotions assistant and very excited about this uh, woman. She uh, was a minor in art and design and a parks and recreation um, human performance major. Uh, was it parks and recreation? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. park, parks and recreation. So really interesting combination, an artist herself and um, a really astute uh, graphic designer. Um, in her own right. So that will be really helpful with the whole uh, promoting <laughs> our public art. Um, and other than that, um, we're, we're kind of shifting now uh, to kind of catching up after some of these big projects. Staff is, um, one of the, um, Tristan who works here, he's sharing his time at Senior Center. We um, have, uh, someone had a baby at the Senior Center. Uh, so uh, he's there. Um, 
uh, four days a week. So we'll be really happy when our staff person, um, our next staff person comes on to help. Um, so those are the big things to share with all of you. So on a side note, just because you brought up HPER um, as a bit, I was in another meeting two weeks, three weeks ago, and I, I've been literally like toting this note around with me um, since then. As you get, as we move further along, right, this isn't just the MPAC side of it, but this is the city of Marquette side of it, and you're looking at the cultural trail, uh, Jackie Medina, who is a professor at Northern is a really good person to consider folding into that process or inviting her into it because a lot of her students, in fact, I'm, I'm probably betting the person you just hired as an intern had Jackie as a faculty member. Mm -hmm. But I know one of the things that she actually does as part of her curriculum is they work with interpreted, interpretive signage specifically. And so there might be some really good avenues and routes. Um, I also know if I'm thinking about cultural trail, Jackie also sits on the center for the Faculty Advisory Council for the Center for Native American Studies, which I do too. So there's already good synergy potentially between uh, the cultural trail and some of those ideas and faculty that she's already, already working with um, that are also linked in. So just worth having in the mix. Yeah, and just uh, she is aware of the cultural trail project and um, I think exploring how much time she has and once we yeah. think about how much time it'll be, but yeah, wonderful resource. Okay, so with that, that brings us to item seven, which is the Friends of the Marquette Public Art Commission report. So we actually met. Uh, we met last uh, week. Uh, the three of us met. That's uh, Jennifer Ray and uh, Nina Itner. And basically the agenda was board recruitment. So we spent a long time really thinking about people in the community that are passionate by art, uh, dedicated to the community and also have the network and the resources to um, kind of uh, to fundraise for public art. So there, we came up with a list of about 10 people um, and then actually uh, they're all being called and then it'll be followed up by a letter kind of giving a two page synopsis of what we've done, basically the presentation to the city commission, but in short form um, in background and what they would be expected to do. Um, so we're hoping that in a month we have some new committed people um, that can actively fundraise for if it's Hurley Park or what, you know, maybe any of these projects. Um, they're probably gonna really want the advisement or we could do a group uh, meeting maybe um, once um, more people join. So it, it's a good start. Um, they did, I couldn't find, I've got to talk to Forrester, the new Friends Of, I think he's still packaging it up, the new Friends Of logo, so I wasn't able to share that with him, I couldn't find it on the drive. Um, I did share the Public Art Commission's logo, so we'll be using that on our letterhead when we send those letters to those uh, potential members. Nope, I can, I, I, I actually, he did, he packaged it in the email he sent back on September the 24th. Um, it just might not have made it up to there, but he has it as a zipped file and I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I just double checked right now. So there's um, Friends of MPAC for print and web and then MPAC also for print and web that's sitting there. Okay, wonderful. Yep. So yeah, that's the, the update with that. And both uh, Nina and Jen were very excited, full of energy, um, you know, excited about the future projects, having a project to get their, uh, sink their teeth into, I think really makes a big difference. So that's the Friends Of report. And if anyone has any questions or. Well, it's just exciting to know that there's some track. And again, we've, now we've finally got like, there's pieces going, right? It's, it's like, we're getting the, getting the, the, the rock moving, right? It's not even a ball. It's like, let's just get some, get some things underway. We well, don't have any if anyone has a suggestion for an individual to serve on that board of trustees for them to email me the name and contact number. Okay. We don't have any new business, which is again, lovely. We can sort of just keep motoring along through some of the stuff we've needed to, to route out. Uh, and the first of those is the status on the Words to Live and Bike By. Words to Live and Bike By is complete. We are still, we haven't, um, again, we're short staff. So we were going to do some social media profiles of the artists with their work. Um, hopefully uh, those will roll out on uh, Monday. 
And we also talked, uh, actually today, uh, talked about the idea of asking the community, sharing on Instagram as well, but asking the community maybe to write some poetry inspired um, by some of the words and the design. So finding new ways to kind of uh, celebrate those designs before the snow falls in those words. Um, I wanted to screen share and show everybody the pictures that we have. So if there's questions about specific designs, we learned a lot about uh, painting on the bike path, the locations that we selected, and how much time the process took, and also the community's uh, reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and Maureen was instrumental um, that first week and the second week. I could not have done it without Maureen. She was amazing, great representative, was on the news at one point as well. Um, so Maureen, when we go through some of these pictures, I know you'll remember some of the comments from the community. Um, and some of the things that we thought we should think about for the future if we were to do this project again. So I will screen share. Am I screen sharing yet? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes. So this is the first one, remember. Um, and it was a uh, there was a little controversy with some of the um, residents, most of the residents across the street for Founders Landing were very pleased with it and excited about it. But people who live on the first floor had a very different view of it. Um, so, I mean, before I actually go through the complaints, I should say that this was received really, really, really well. It was the first one, everyone that walked by was super excited the uh, group that was working on it really enjoyed themselves. It was a positive experience all around. People living nearby were excited about it. Um, there were some issues, and Maureen might remember more, but one specifically um, is a resident that lives on one of the lower uh, condominiums. And we, I actually went into her condominium and um, I walked in and I mean, when you sit in the living room, that's your view, is that word. And um, I think that they were a little taken aback that it was gonna be more than a month that it was up, that it was gonna be for next summer. Um, and it really changes their view. Um, I did look into it. There is no nece necessarily formal notification to uh, city residents unless you're uh, building a structure so high. Um, and um, I did invite this resident to our meetings. I invited them to write their feedback down. I invited them any way I could think to make them comfortable. They weren't comfortable doing any of that. Very supportive of art. Just wish this project had been located somewhere out of their, um, you know, not necessarily right in front of their building or that had been put in, given consideration. Um, and then I'll let uh, Maureen um, share some feedback from that as well. About the colors, Maureen. Yeah. So, Tina, before we go on, I don't know. I, I can't see any image at all. All I'm seeing is basically your file management system. Yep, same. It says I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, we are, but all we see is literally where all your files are. We actually, we're not seeing like an image opened that shows us what the, the pictures look like. So, I just think oh, it would be. No. So, it might Here. just be. So can you see my mouse right moving? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I'm clicking on an image, right? Like, yeah, I just don't know if it. If well, it we don't know. Can you see that? Are you sharing maybe yeah. just like the one application? I know yeah, sometimes I you're not it's... sharing your full screen. You're just yeah, sharing right, your right. file, yeah. Go back to screen share and see if you can share the um, the whole screen. OK, just one second here. Okay, I'm going back to screen share. Base, it just says uh, select window and an application that you want to share. But my guess is like your file management thing is just like that's file. There we go. There, there you go. Phew. There, you did it. 
So that whole time, this is what I was talking about. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, and Maureen, um, I know that um, you were there when she was talking a lot about colors and place. And I was hoping you might, I don't want to put you on the spot, but say something maybe about that. Are you talking about the person who was, who lives in the condominium? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, I guess it was about the, some of the colors being very bright. So what they did is like the M was a bright, bright yellow. So they washed over it with some diluted white paint to kind of tone that back a little bit. And then once the bikes were on there, it did kind of take away from how bright the letters were. Um, if I'm correct in remembering this, they came down and were mentioning how bright it was before. Yeah, it would have been before the bikes were put on. So um, I think that helped bring it down a couple notches. It was pretty bright. So um, that was that's pretty much all I remember of that. I was thinking about the um, point of choosing designs that blend with the natural landscape. Um, they had mentioned, you know, there seems to be a color palette at this area. Should the Public Art Commission consider color palette? Um, and, uh, you know, when they're looking at designs that are along the lake shore. Okay. Yeah, I unfortunately don't recall any of that. So that's one thing I remember. And then I think one thing you, so that was one thing. And then another thing you pointed out, Maureen, was the safety issue. I did because it's right next to the road and people were slowing down. Um, people in their cars driving were stopping, creating a little bit of a wait for people behind them. It was not super lengthy, but still could have been an issue. And also before I forget, I did want to give a shout out to the people at the Hampton Inn because they were very helpful they brought out snacks for the artists and they let us use their restrooms. So just wanted to make sure that they were recognized as well. Emily, did you, it looked like at one point you had a comment that you either had or wanted to make about oh, I think I think, the color palette. Yeah. I mean, I guess like, I just think as a committee, like the more that we sort of ascribe the art to be something that somebody else wants it to be, the less art it is. And, and so people should be able to take charge of their projects. Like for this project, there are already uh, many, many, many constraints, like very many constraints. And to add more on top of that, we're basically just telling artists exactly what they should do. And then that's not really their work then to, to start saying like, well, you can only use these colors and it can only be this, you know, it's like, at some point, um, the work has to reflect the, the artist's vision uh, within the constraints of whatever the project is, like whatever the RFP asks for or RFQ asks for. Uh, so I just think like if we're interior decorating, um, we could choose colors that match people's interiors, but uh, we're not, we're a public art commission and we're not uh, in charge of changing people's projects to reflect what we think is aesthetically better. We might not, you know, it's like, that's not what we're in charge of facilitating art projects for the public. Um, when I went and viewed the work with my family, I was concerned, I was like, oh, what's wrong with the yellow? it's covered, it's washing off, what's not working? So thank you for clarifying that it was muted intentionally because I had serious concerns uh, about there being something wrong with the paint. So it's unfortunate it was muted, I feel, but if, and if I, it and I should say that we didn't, person. Linnea, and it's um, important to say we didn't, I didn't um, tell them to mute it. Um, they went, the resident went down and spoke to the artists and complain. And the artists, you know, it was the first word. Everyone wanted everyone to be happy. 
you know, we didn't want to get city officials involved. And, um, and I did tell Michelle Cuccini, you do not have to tone this down. You know, um, it was, uh, I think that the artists, because they actually met and had a long conversation with these residents, they wanted to kind of figure out a way because this, well, she's got to live with it for a long, long, you know, so that was very nice of them, but I also made it clear actually in front of the resident too. I said, I'm not telling them, you know, to change it. Um, so just so you all know that that was important and Maureen was there as well and can attest to that. Yes. I, I think, you know, people are entitled to their opinions and I'm really happy that they choose to share them. Um, but I do think it's dangerous if we uh, start making art by committee, you know? Should we go to the next one? Yeah, okay. Um, Dream. Um, Dream was really successful. Um, love this one. Uh, ben uh, Panowski, or I think it's Panowski, did a fantastic job. I want to explain if you can see my mouse moving above it here, what happened. Um, so as you remember, first off, we should say this did not happen in the location that it was meant for. Um, this was the first stencil, the second stencil we did. And um, also residents across from um, in the birdhouses were, um, in short, I should say that the city manager's office phone lit up this day. Um, and I, I think given that this project is so, uh, we wanted it to be successful. We wanted the community to embrace it. So we did, um, we weren't asked to move it. Um, given how much commotion it caused, Maureen was there, she can attest to that. Um, staff made the decision um, to move it. And we moved it um, further along um, what you can see behind it, not to get a picture, is the playground. Uh, it's right, if we're standing here, you would see the playground at Madsen Park. So it's actually a very, very pretty location, but this is one of those administrative calls I had to make. Um, you had to be there. I just wanted this project to be successful and not make the paper the next day. It's a bike path mural project. It's not permanent, it's not forever. And, um, I, I feel like the choice was the right one. You know, I, I, I do. Um, and I'm happy with the location. The stencil, we left a bunch of the black top exposed here because the artist was supposed to, uh, according to their design, the sky was supposed to extend um, almost two feet from these letters here. Um, so we coned it off um, and he was gonna start at the bottom and work his way up and move the cones as the paint dried. And after two days of painting, he just decided to uh, not go any further. He actually went lower, or he went um, closer to the end of the bike path here where I'm pointing. None of that was in the design. It all started up with the letters. I did ask him um, when he was doing it, I would really like, we, we put it, we positioned it this way so it would be more centered in the bike path um, and you know, encouraged him to use that space and he decided to change the design and uh, leave it as is. He spent a full two days working on it. Um, so it was a lot of time. So another learning curve, you know, he is not being paid. Um, he felt like he could give no more time after that mm -hmm. two day process. Any questions about that one? The rest go smoothly. <laughs> These were the only two. Um, and because they were near residents, which is interesting, the rest aren't in view of residents. So. Um, gratitude went swimmingly. Um, the uh, Northern student that uh, did this uh, worked, one day she worked almost 15 hours on it. She was there from early morning until it was dark. And I finally had to come and tell her when it was dark after nine, I'm like, I gotta clean up. Um, Really great job, a lot of great feedback. We, as we got more comfortable of stenciling and working with people, stencils, 
Um, you can see this one's almost more in the middle. This area wasn't as busy. It was a lot easier for us to stand for it smack in the middle. Um, also, um, people that the farmers, I went to see it during the farmer's market and the farmers were, their response was they loved it, but why did we do it upside down? And I said, well, I'm looking at you now. I can take a picture and look at from this position, look at the farmer's market and have gratitude. And it was just interesting what people's perspectives were depending where you were standing. Dream also, people thought that was upside down as well. And a learning curve for all of us to figure out uh, direction, I, I suppose. But this one was really wonderful. Respect also, this was the fastest one because it was mostly, uh, colors were uh, all uh, done really quickly. Actually staff, we all painted um, when we were able to assist the artists if they wanted us to assist. And a lot of them ended up being really thankful because it went a lot faster. But the artist, uh, we filled in the letters um, and then she did the black outline and then the, um, the images on top. This took less than a day. This took about a half a day. Went fast and a lot of thank yous, a lot of positive feedback about this one from the community. And then um, the last one, um, Hope, also was done in less than a day. Um, really wonderful, a uh, lot of great response. This one's off the bike path um, a little bit, but I have three pictures of it to show you how people are photographing it and putting it on Facebook. So here's one that someone sent us. You can see how vibrant it is. And this is one, another one, uh, one that someone uh, tagged us in on Facebook. So uh, really enjoying seeing the different uh, perspectives and images people are using. They blended so, in and that's shape. That. Well, no, that's good to, <clears throat> excuse me. That's wonderful to see again, Maureen, Tina, thank y'all so much for what it took to make that happen. First project doing anything, it's where we, it's where we work the kinks, right? It's really where we figure out just what does it take to actually make something happen. Mm -hmm. If we choose to do this again, which I hope we do because I think one, we've got some of the infrastructure, like literally the templates are in place. We can expand our alphabet, obviously, but there are possibilities and maybe it does then point to being aware whether um, that while the bike path is on city property, people feel an ownership of the space that they look out across it and sort of embrace it as part of their own space in a really meaningful and sometimes very passionate way. And so that might make us more strategic about where we choose to put things if we don't want to, if we don't want to make the, or if we don't have the artist feel pressured, but still choosing to make a decision based on their design to alter it because they don't want somebody upset about what it is that they're doing. And you don't necessarily, um, Again, you want a project to be as positive as it ever can be, knowing that somebody's always going to be crabby about what it is that we do, right? We, we will never make everyone happy Absolutely. with the choices we make. But if we know that we're more likely to face issues, does it become, even though everybody's invited here as part of public comment, and we reviewed all of these things in person in front of like literally um, where people could have come, that we at least are aware of it. It doesn't mean that I'm saying we should never put something in front of a residential area because I don't mean that at all, but it may mean that as we get closer to those things that maybe we do specifically let like let that part of a community know that we'd really like to be able to do this here. Yes, it's only temporary um, to catch some of this stuff at the front end rather than while the artist is actually trying to implement the project at a location. I want to say that this was a great outreach opportunity. Um, we Staff made a point, um, and Maureen can attest to this, that we were there the entire time things were being painted to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Everyone, who are you? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. What is this about? So it was a great, it was great exposure. And then the people that um, weren't so like the project but didn't like the location, also an opportunity um, for them to learn about what we're about. And I did tell the people that were living near more of the public spaces, you're going to be seeing more of this, mm -hmm. um, and uh, encouraging them, you know, to get involved. Um, to look for meetings, public meetings. I let them know all of the different media that it was on. 
because they had just heard about it. It was on TV. Mm -hmm. And the importance of really getting the word out there when projects that are going on so people are aware. That really, I was very aware of how much you need to do to get the word out there so people actually mm -hmm. can't catch everyone. But um, it was a good outreach opportunity. And then in the future, um, kind of maybe finding protocol for, you know, I felt confident, I guess, making that decision um, and talking with uh, my director, but having some different members to reach out to of the Public Art Commission, um, if there is a decision that needs to be made that um, you might want to weigh in on. Yeah. The other thing I think, um, just as a, as a note, so I guess I, I this is where I'm gonna ask Maureen to make sure some of this, and since you were, did that project, you've got a lot of those observations that you had about like things that you recognized would be really valuable to make sure that they find their way into the minutes so we have that as a record. Like if we revisit this and now that we, and also Tina, if you could let us know what the, the cumulative budget was in terms of supplies and materials, because that'll give us a sense if we wanna revisit it, what does that look like? And can we build into that in the future a stipend, even if it's not a huge stipend for the artist to do this? Um, because I think now that we really have a better sense of, you know, what is the scope? Like if somebody got something really ambitious, um, like we have a center, like a center point for what a stipend would be. Um, so it might've been the one that only took three hours. They may get the same stipend. We're not literally gonna um, say more complex equals more money, but it also means that if we now know what it can cost to do this, that we can take that into account and ensure that we're also, again, supporting artists in that way too, which would be a really, I think, a good addition, especially given the sense of now, how long it's gonna take to right. do some of these things. So I realize you might not have that number on hand, but yeah, if you can let us know, we'd initially allocated a, a sum total of $6,000, knowing that what would be left over would potentially find, well, not potentially, would find its way into those artist-led neighborhood projects. That'll let us know what, how much money we have to allocate towards that other, other bit of yeah, outreach. Right now we're under budget and I'll find the, the number um, okay. for the meetings end. Okay, that's but great. We were definitely under budget. Oh, that's good. Well, that's what we wanted um, for that bit. Okay, so with that, um, where oh and Leslie go ahead oh your audio went my dear oh no oh, no you aren't okay no. now you're back oh, you're okay. Good. okay I have one more comment but it ties in with this and it also ties in with the Atropolis should I do it or, or Atropolis should I comment now or later or is that next um if it's tied to if it's tied okay. to the path we all just do it it's it is I would like to um get professional photos so we have them for our tropolis uh is there a way we could hire the photographer that we used previously so that it can get photographed before snow flies potentially you know in the next month or two so uh so we have good documentation to use for our tropolis of that and there's also i know a new mural with the butterflies on south berga that was done this year and um i'm not sure if there's any other uh, and there's no other ones on my radar that happened during the, the mural past on I feel like we should try the photographer. Correct. Yep, the mural on Velodrome, right? That's there. Um, I don't know, I guess that's a question. Um, because we're talking about work that is, is less permanent, um, one, whether that photographer would want to take on piecemeal documentation jobs for us, like if that's even a possibility, I think at least my initial understanding was that that kind of documentation that was kind of the in-between documentation would be handled, uh, right, not to put it, but the, like this is where your social media person, right, sort of comes in, is that part of what staff takes on so that we would use that as kind of the stopgap measures between the, you know, once a year do we look and see if there's been enough influx to then do it um, just because, you know, to get him to document. Now, admittedly, that was a lot more work, but that was several thousand dollars for us out of a budget, and our budget is, yeah. So I mean, maybe it's something that we budget into the next projects, uh, the doc professional documentation. Um, we could take some pictures, and um, if the weather permits, you know, if it gets some nice sunny weather, I could email it to everybody to see if, like, yeah, this is good enough. Like, mm -hmm. these are some good shots. Um, just before it's snow or they could potentially get ruined or damaged. I just wanted documentation. I agree. I totally agree. I yeah, think it's early on. Is, can we get it where we've got 
especially especially the bike path ones, um, because at least the ones on the walls are more likely to weather being vertical surfaces. Um, but if we can get something that looks sufficiently right that it'll manage, or do we find, or do we reach out and does it become a um, send out a call to uh, Christine Lenzen and Dennis Staffney as faculty members in the photography area at Northern and see if they've got students who'd be willing again and pay them like so that they've got a skill set and they're qualified, but we're not undertaking such a huge financial outlay for documenting this initially. Um, so it's stuff to consider. Would that depend how we much is under, left in the budget? I'm sorry, what was that Linnea? Well, you said we were under budget. I just, yeah, we don't. But, but half that, that, the, that other side of that budget is slated to go to that, is slated to go to the artist led neighborhood grants, right? So that money is actually already slated for something. Um, now, and a part of it again comes down to like, we could ask the photographer who did that work, but the question is, what is he gonna charge us? to do it. Um, it also seems like it's something that, yes, we could think about going forward, but there's a social media person who has to take images for the social media and it becomes part of like caring for public artwork as a institution. And so like I couldn't hire a professional photographer every time we got a new piece of art for the art collection, I wouldn't e expect uh, many institutions to be able to do that unless they had somebody on staff. Uh, so, so going forward, perhaps there's a solution where we build it in every other year, but mm -hmm. things need to be photographed initially as soon as they're done so that we have a baseline mm -hmm. and that's part of protecting the artwork. So mm -hmm. that, that has to just be part of how we inventory or, or how we care for, begin to care for immediately there should be photographs that become part of that database that helps us understand what the work looked like uh, upon its arrival uh, or, or installation in a city spot. And one last thing, I know this is all going long, but um, maybe something to consider too. We did talk about the artists touching things up or us, we talked about them, get, at some point we talked about these things getting touched up in the spring so they would go through the summer. And maybe some of that money is used to pay the artists if they wanna come back and touch it up. Um, otherwise they might have to get painted over in the spring. But we did discuss them being up through like next August. Mm -hmm. And we can revisit the side of the budget yeah. with that once okay. we have a better sense of literally out before we forget. Yep. Okay. all of our budget lines. So with that, Steve, since I think at that point we were on to the what, what I'm sorry, right, I put on there is like project backboard or Queen City Quartz do you, and the review of our current um, RFQ. Do you want to share your screen and do it that way? Yeah, that, I think that would be easier. Okay. Can we see it? Yep. All right. Um, so, I mean, first off, I'm sorry to get this to you uh, this morning. I know you haven't had a chance to read it. Um, so I'm not sure what I need to necessarily point out, but um, the things in yellow are new additions. I felt up here, it was important to uh, better underline that we weren't, we weren't asking for anyone to do anything with art yet other than submit existing works essentially. So submitting their portfolios. So I wanted to make sure that that line about um, selecting finalists was second paragraph. Uh, mm -hmm. That there would be at least some motivation to uh, kind of see this as an opportunity to to also get paid just to do a, a small piece, small component of work, but um, that uh, we wouldn't necessarily have everyone just submitting ideas immediately because I, I feel like we would have to almost dismiss or disregard any visual that would come in um, because they'd be trying to hone in or try to overpower us with something. And I, I don't wanna put that on anyone uh, to say, show us that work ahead of time. But, Plus there's um, also that idea of them doing spec work, like to make work. Right, that right, it's spec. Like that. Yeah. That, that's that's yeah. what you don't want to do. And then in my, my research, uh, looking at some other RFQs, the ones that put the budget in there seemed more real. They, they seem more tangible. So I'm, I'm in favor of putting that budget in there. Now, I don't know if I've got the number right. I, it was 10 to 15 in terms of labor and 
uh, paint supplies. Is that right? I'm going to hang on just a second. I can pull up. Uh, I'm just looking at my end. So the, the okay, the total estimated budget, um, it comes down if we have to do the 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 demo plus asphalt. It's actually more than that. The labor and materials was 10 to 15. The acrylic surfacing, if we have to do it, was 10. And the demo and new asphalt, if we had to do it, was 16.5. So it's matter. So I just need to maybe note this is it's labor. Yeah, that's labor. That and the supplies other costs, only. Right. Yep. Yeah. And that's clear um, because the other part was tied to us getting the infrastructure in place for them to be able to undertake the project, right? To get all the pieces. So literally that way the artist gets to just show up, right? And do the work. Yes. Okay. okay. So I, I don't know if it's important that we have the total budget then, or if it's this just, is the this is what they have to work with. Basically mm -hmm. they get what's not used from the art supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so like re read over that, I'll, I'll revise this soon. Um, Queen City Courts, I put that into the, the title there. Uh, I don't know that it needs to go anywhere else ahead of time, but look that over. I don't think I changed anything in here. Look like. I don't think I changed anything in here. There, there may have been a editorial note to, or change, but it didn't change anything. But uh, Tracy will go through this. I'll um, go look through it. Yep. I'll, I'll, one, I'll... one of the, the editorial things was there were a lot of uh, words like proposal, and it's not a proposal. So I, I put in application, I think almost 100% of the way in terms of that replacement, uh, or I said qualifications, one of those two. Uh, but so as Tracy's looking through it, hopefully make Check note it. of that. Mm -hmm. I, I did a search for proposal. I didn't find any other ones except one that it needed to be there for. Um, Steven, I did go out and I did the Google and then I measured it physically. It was 40 by 60, exactly. Okay. And um, the uh, the estimate, like I told you in the email, that Smith Paving gave was for 4,200 square feet. So they they told me that they were there, but they they thought it was a a real size basketball court. It's a half court. So hopefully, we'll be much cheaper. It is a half court with two baskets, though. Oh. Mm -hmm. So and I mean, it has it has the lines for both. I see. Um, it's just a smaller court. Um, and as far as like whether or not that ends up being a, a we do we change the size or, or something or, or do we allow like a little extra? Because that's slightly bigger, I think, than the, the standard one. Sorry if I'm scrolling fast. I forget where it is now. Uh, we'll, we'll come to it. Um, I got to go back up here. Uh, I mean, I just added document format rather than proposal formats because um, that made sense for submitting a, a document of application, but I can change that to application. I don't know. It, this is editorial at this point. Uh, I removed a couple things in here, um, including the, the submission of uh, the cost or the rate because um, they're, not, they're not doing that. The finalists would do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I still wasn't sure about this one, so I left it here for the moment. I didn't remember taking a note on what people thought about uh, the contractor. And I, I didn't know if we needed a question answered from Tina on that one in terms of who's uh, who's being hired by this person and do they need to go through city approval if they have an assistant or if that was assistant it just needs that to be- just the artist needed to have the liability insurance. Right. Yeah, the liability insurance would cover that. Um, whatever that language was that I sent you should cover that as well if they have employees. So I, I have that down later. Is, okay. is this something that I don't even need to include in here? I can, we can ask the city attorney. You maybe make okay. note for the city attorney since they have to review it after this. Um, I added a note in this one about uh, just making sure that they know it has to go through the city commission for approval as well, because I didn't find that in the existing document anywhere else, um, other than seeing it in the timeline later on here. Uh, qualifications, I did adjust this a lot. I didn't label it in yellow, I just made the note out here. So by all means, we can hash some of this out now if you like, I'll, I'll just read through it um, because part of it was, uh, I think, budgetary. So I had to remove that one. Uh, so in terms of this, I, I divvied up uh, quality of work, whether or not the work in the portfolio is 
innovative, interesting. It feels like it would endure, you know, 10 years in terms of being still interesting in 10 years, uh, whether that is demonstrated in their portfolio of work. And then whether, number two, whether their work feels appropriate to our project and the, the scope of everything around it, the, the environment, obviously, the context of the surrounding neighborhood, certainly as we're finding out in, in the bike path ones, uh, does it feel like they would be sensitive to responding to that? Uh, not to necessarily uh, take all of the, the meat and potatoes out of their, their field and say it has to look like what they want it to look like or anything, but does it look like they'd be able to research essentially and get involved in that? Uh, and then prior experience, uh, demonstrating that they've got that project management uh, experience in there. And then timeliness and durability. Does their work look like it ultimately would stand the test of time? Does it look like they know how to do a piece and it's not going to fall apart um, in five, five minutes? Uh, or are they going to be able to speak in their letter of intent to uh, willingness to collaborate with someone who has a little bit more experience or expertise in a particular type of application? So we may have people submitting who don't know anything about painting on blacktop and, and now we have some people on the, on the commission here that do have some experience doing that a little bit more. Um, so would they be willing to, to work in that way? Um, and it, it goes down in point total. That's just what I threw out there. So let me hear it. I just have one suggestion and mm -hmm. that it's small, it's minor. Uh, I think captivating is like a, a word that we maybe can't use. Okay. Just because I don't know what captivating means to Tracy or to Linnea or to Christina or to Tina, but I have a feeling you, all of our understanding of what captivating is, uh, if we say it's original, um, yeah, I, I just think it may be original and lasting quality or, or it has okay. lasting integrity uh, might be the, the best. We're obviously not going to try and pick something that you know, doesn't, that doesn't go beyond that. But I think that those are easier to sort of suss out maybe, or maybe not. I don't. I agree with that. I think the other ones are um, a little bit more objective in terms of how we define them. So yeah, I agree, Emily. Any other thoughts? Do we do we like the point totals? Do we want to list the points at all? We don't have to. I think it's. I guess I would make a. I mean, I guess I'm thinking. I'm thinking gradings and rubrics, right? I mean, that's a sense. We haven't quite made a rubric, but we're we're like creeping right up on one for this. And I think that's important if we're wanting people to know how we're going to be evaluating them. Like we don't literally have to break it down. Like this is going to get a three or this is going to get a forty. But if they understand that what we what we're valuing the most, right? That that's what that point total tells us. Like we're first things first, we're gonna look at the quality of work and that's gonna weigh higher to us than whether you've got prior experience. I, I think that gives the maker and the person who's hoping to get this project the understanding that they need to be thoughtful about what what work they're putting into that portfolio, that we're looking like for original work. And I, I know what I think you mean by lasting quality. I think that's also kind of a, a I think it's a, a tough one, right? I mean, what, what sort of work does stand the test of time? Um, that's hard to tell until after the time has passed. Um, yeah. yeah, but I do think at least it gives them a sense of more of what we're after and why we're thinking about or what has the most relevance, right? What has the most importance as we're looking? So if they're um, yeah, I was like, I don't have any experience, but I've got really great work. It would be really appropriate. And I've done something kind of like this, you know, I, they'll know what that's going to mean versus somebody who's got, yeah, I've totally done paintings like this before and I have prior experience, but my work is bad. Um, they're going to understand um, <laughs> why maybe they don't get something. So mm -hmm. I think the point values are, are, are they work. The one thing I have about durability, though, is if we're going to pick something that doesn't last, it's uh, it's not in our best interest as a public art commission. I, so I don't know how to assess out the points for that. But thinking yeah, about that, yeah, the last one is only 10 points, you know, and it's yeah. like, 
we do want them to know that we're very serious about it having durability. I mean, yeah. we don't want somebody to think it's like something that's going to last for a year. Right. Uh, it, it is certainly noted earlier that we're expecting this. Yeah, to I know. I just decade. didn't know if that would add, that add would... 10 points to it, maybe. Sure. Well, maybe it's not a criteria I mean, necessarily to evaluate in this aspect because hmm? it's something that's going to happen. Maybe not in the application, mm -hmm. but they should know that that's part of the gig. I, I know it says earlier. I don't like, yeah, sorry. I'm not. I'm wondering, should, should they maybe, if they haven't painted on a surface like that, do a little research or can we give them links to trusted resources that, you know, this is what you'd be getting into. Yes, their surface would be smoother than what we had to do in the bike path, but it was super crazy challenging um, with uh, spills, cleaning, um layers of paint otherwise it could get scraped off real easily like i'm just wondering um are there resources that we can give them if they haven't painted on this kind of surface before if we are going to do that we have to provide it universally to everybody right because I mean, you don't want to prioritize one person who happened to ask a question and they somehow now have you know, they've been basically given an in through MPAC that was not given to somebody else. So if it is something we're, we choose to do, it needs to be part of this application Then those resources are available to anybody who's going through this process. Well, and would the city feel more confident knowing that the person is able to carry out a giant mural painting on a city property? You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like maybe there should be a little bit more for somebody who has that experience and we know that they have that skill set to carry it out they know what they're getting into because can you imagine going into a project like this and thinking oh it's just like any material and then realizing like oh actually it's very different can we then maybe think about the words that we're using here um, for what these are so quality of work i think we're pretty clear about appropriateness of work to project that's good because prior experience spans both three and four right now, um, because we're talking about prior experience, can they do project management? But then we're also basically saying, do you basically have the background that proves that you're gonna be able to pull this thing off? Like they're, 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 I know what you're asking in terms of like the criteria we're looking at, but it makes me almost want to, um, like, do we basically call it, uh, we're going to be qualified. I, I just think we maybe need to distinguish because I almost feel like prior experience is really more about the bottom one. And we need a different set of words that says like, you've proved that you can, both of them need prior experience. It's just prior experience for two different things. Project management. So like maybe the other one is project. I mean, I, I think it's all quality of work. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, that's the, the kicker. I'm just trying to figure out the. Um, I mean, we can just call this project management here. Project management and then bullet points. Wait. Well, well, I think it was prior you basically experience. make it prior, prior, uh, make it, yeah, make prior it. experience and then bullet points, right? Because it's how they painted on that site and that scale, yeah. right? It was one of the things we talked about last time. Project management and sticking to the schedule. And then we can the team and, and the 30 points material. Like, here's what we'll be evaluating as part of that prior experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I that despise words, like, so I'm, I'll figure out the bullet. That's fine. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then everything I'm listing here. Basically, yeah. Basically, else? everything you're listing in those two categories. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. It's, yeah. Okay. And Steve, I would keep the similar scale as well because I do think yes. that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it's there. It just is like needs to be sort of have different. Bread. <laughs> All right. I'll figure that out. Okay. And again, if you want to kick past stuff past Steve, I'm happy to to yeah, yeah. word word flag. You'll it. get it. You'll okay. get it. <laughs> Hopefully this week. Okay. Uh, the tentative schedule is obviously very tentative. I I threw out dates just to to make sure that we know that I know what rounds it has to go through. So. 
I was thinking after this, I'd have to go through Tracy and then we'd have a final vote next month and then hopefully be ready to go to city wherever it needs to go in the city. And Tina, and, can we potentially put it like at the same time we're looking at it, can we have the city lawyer be looking over those parts that, because I also know that we, we've had some delays out of the city lawyer before. Um, and so if we can have some of that answered in process, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think there's room to push this back further because I'm having April 9th being when it would ultimately be awarded to the, the selected artist. So there, there would still be some time, but um, there it is. I gave them six weeks to submit qualifications. That way we can make a lot of noise, hopefully get it out there. Um, maybe have to look into the call for entry websites mm -hmm. that are out there because that's where I've certainly found a bunch of examples and tons of eyes get on those. Yeah. Um, and then we'd meet uh, that a couple weeks afterwards to look at all the qualifications uh, and then hopefully be able to announce after that that these would be the three that we're selecting and send that information out to them. It gives us some time if someone backs out to, to maybe come up with someone else or have an alternate to go down the list on. Uh, and then design submissions so the actual proposal documents um, do after that. So I think that gave them three weeks to come up with that. I don't know if that's enough time for you all. It, it feels okay for me. Uh, if all I'm doing is a color comp mm -hmm. and a little design research three weeks and put a, a, a couple pages of documents maybe together, it feels okay, but We've certainly got some time. I don't, I don't know how you all feel. Well, you certainly do a lot more of that work in that timeline than almost everybody here. Um, in terms I, of literally turning around for clients. Weeks. Yeah, okay. Uh, three or four weeks is pretty fine. Uh, um, I, I, just, I mean, if, yeah. I was just looking at the calendar and there's a city commission meeting um, November 30th which means it would have to be to them by like the 26th of November. And then the next one is not until no December 14th. So we would actually have to get it on the um, November 30th uh, agenda. But our meeting and our meeting would be on November 11th. I just looked at the, the second. So perfectly doable, yeah as long as the attorney and everything goes smoothly. Yeah, okay. I mean, so this is all tentative. Um, and then after that, this is uh, no dates here, but I put in public comment period with the design submission. So we'd have three pieces of art uh, to get some feedback on. And then after that, so what's that uh, a month, basically in a little change uh, that we would eventually award that thing Hopefully that would give us enough time to have the commission also approve it. But if that needs to get pushed back, it certainly can. It, it's listed as tentative anyway here. So the artist knows that too. Uh, and I've been in these things before and they get pushed back so far. <laughs> I was in one that they said, oh, we're gonna know July 7th. And then it was September that they said, we're gonna know in fall. And it literally found out like a week ago. So I, I think it's pretty common to have these things push and evolve back. So um, and any other thoughts here? Is there something I'm missing in our steps? I just have a quick question. Do we specify how many finalists we're selecting or do we want to leave ourselves the liberty depending on? That's it. Oh, uh, am I, I probably missing that? I think I, I think I said up to three. Got it. The okay. Scrolling. Okay. But I do, should we in this, okay, would it matter here? Up because I do like the idea of there being alternates because people's like stuff goes weird. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that well, we don't, don't know, that, does that need to be here? Or is that just something that we need to like identify as a-, as no. a as well, Behind the scenes, I think we can do that. I mean, and, and at the time where we, we or who, whomever is reviewing, we could say, um, you know, this is A, B, C or Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we all want them to be capable and exciting. Mm -hmm. 
I, I skipped over this one. Um, that was the that was the the court size that uh, Tina said um, was forty by sixty, right? Correct. Yeah. Forty by sixty. Um, so this is the typical half size court. It, it ultimately, it doesn't really matter. I don't think as long as we know what their dimensions to work within are and what the what the lines would look like in that space. Uh, as long as I get that information soon, I can work up a, an Illustrator doc to put that info in because uh, that needs to be dropped in at the bottom. So yeah, it, so it, is, 40, it, is. it is 40 by 60. So would that be in there then? Well, you, you said in the, the email about it being something we could potentially adjust the size. Well, when we're re-asphalting it, if you wanted right. to make it appropriate, but it's so long that you would actually have to dig up the basketball hoops themselves and move those. It could be, you'd be making it significantly smaller, you know, five feet on each side. Okay. All right. I, I need to go out there, I think, to You should. There's not much measure. room. You'll be surprised. It's playground yeah. and then sidewalk. So there's not a lot of leeway after mm -hmm. I thought about that. Okay. Scrolling back. All right, we're, we're down to here to be determined for work completion, obviously. Okay. This, none of this has changed. Uh, this was our previous existing insurance info. And this is what Tina gave me from the tourist park playground and Father Marquette's uh, RFPs that were out there. So I'm going to delete this. <laughs> All right, I think that was it. Other than to say, I need to put that court info right there. Great. Okay. Uh, so I will try to get some changes to the bullet points, get that out to you, uh, hopefully by Friday. Okay. And you all let me know if there's anything else. Obviously, Tracy will. Yep, I'll, I'll give it a go. Steven, do, you, do you refer to it as, how do you refer to Hurley Field? How do you... Is it field or park? I put Hurley Field. Um, I noticed that was... an actual sign that says Hurley Park when I was there measuring, and I didn't know that. So it says Hurley Park right next to the basketball court. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, I can stop sharing. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Steve Young. That's dutifully thorough as being great because we're we're making good strides on making that happen. Um, so in the last, since I'm thinking it'll probably run us right up to there, um, and maybe we might sneak a little bit on Arpsopolis with it, is um, that second impact project that we'd hoped to accomplish, whether or not it starts literally the end of this calendrical year or we're looking at it during um, the winter slash spring months was that artist-led neighborhood project that would use any overage that we had from the Words to Live and Bike By project to make many grants available to artists in order to have these site-specific works that were integrated into neighborhoods going on. And so Emily, since that was, I'm not saying you wanted to spearhead it, but it was certainly, I mean, I'm gonna call it your, your idea. idea. <laughs> and, um, whether or not you're able, willing, ready to pick that up and let us move forward with that. So yeah, I had a couple questions. I actually started to look at crafting a call for entry or a, um, whatever we would want to call it. In the projects that I saw that were similar, they were really easy applications, um, really meant to have a lot of leeway. Uh, but one of the things that I sort of wanted to be able to write about in, in the call or in the blurb about it in the details are, you know, what are the neighborhoods? What neighborhoods are we going to put this call out for? Um, so that if people wanted to in their proposal, depending on how we ask for proposals that they could, you know, talk about the, their project within that space so that it it's paying attention to the context in the neighborhood. Uh, and that we give them that opportunity to understand like what what neighborhood that is. So that would be something that I would want us to articulate at least um, in, in advance of releasing the call or coming up with the full details. I'm happy to work on that um, before the next meeting. And I could, you know, I could work on it in the next couple of weeks. 
but that's something I'd want to know is, you know, what are the neighborhoods within the city? Um, do you have an, any, anybody on the committee have any idea of what that looks like? Or um, how would we determine who, who where? I, I suppose the only thing I, I have as a recommendation, and this doesn't, it doesn't restrict anything, but I do think we want to make sure that we aren't just I think we should try to at least enable that everything doesn't end up on east side, right? I, I think that if we're talking about integrating this into the community, it shouldn't, whether we literally dictate that it's gonna be north side, east side, west side, south side, right? Whether you literally wanna quadrant up the community or make it clear in the selection process that um, we do want work that's coming from, right, across Marquette, right? As a city, it, that's important. Okay. But that's, so my, that's my two cents on that, that that's not the, the letter or the law of any of that. That's just kind of how I feel about the whole thing. Uh, so then thinking about that, if we just say like, oh, we're looking for projects in these four areas, like loose areas, um, and say three quarters of the projects come in from for one quadrant. Uh, and so there are higher caliber projects in that quadrant, do we then, just say, well, we're just going to totally be geographically fair. I mean, I'm just These wrapping my questions. mind around the whole. Yes. So folks, what do y'all think? I don't know enough, honestly, about the Marquette neighborhoods personally. So is there a, is there a primer somewhere out there that like divvies things I up? And tells it? <laughs> yeah, but a lot of I you mean, have been here a lot longer than I have. Ask also community development. I mean, they work with neighborhoods all the time. If there are certain, if, does the city refer to certain areas? What the people refer to and the city, it might be different, you know. But I could, I could ask and get that to you. Well, everybody. Or is hey, it? Oh, go ahead, Christine. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I think that definitely, like, if there is an identity to, you know, some of those neighborhoods that residents, you know, identify themselves with, I do think that's helpful. Um, not answering your question here, Emily, but one other thing is I wouldn't be opposed to also putting forth, I guess, some suggested sites, because that's one thing that I was thinking about after last time is if you give people, on the one hand, I like the idea of having kind of the freedom to, you um, you know, identify a location and such. But to your point, Emily, if we start to get overwhelmed with um, too many applications for one specific spot or things like that, I'm almost wondering if we do want to kind of at least put forth some suggestions there. Not necessarily sure how to go about that, but that is one thing that was on my mind. The other thing that I think is tricky with this is like we're giving artists some freedom and that mm -hmm. we're not saying it has to be, it has to stay up for six months. It could be a performance that has ephemeral things that they say their neighbors say are okay uh, in in that space, and so it it not it isn't necessarily structurally changing city property. Do you do you know what I'm saying? Like I think that there could be a lot of gray areas, and I don't know how. Uh, we want to deal with that. I mean, I think that's kind of the beauty of it. Maybe it's talk speaks to some of the things that Jacob, I think was saying in his letter. Um, but I also, I don't know if there's a clause that we need to have that says, uh, you're on your own. <laughs> like as far as making peace with uh, your neighbors and, and inviting your, you know, like the idea is that you're creating a generosity among neighbors or community outreach in, in your neighborhood as an artist, potentially. Could because we set I that? I don't know as, what people, go ahead. Could we set that ahead, as part of the, I was going to say, could we set that at least as a theme for the project, right? Where it's something like building community or something like that, you know, at least to, um, or do we want to leave it open-ended? Well, we can certainly speak to that as the spirit of the project is this, mm -hmm. right? The hope is that it's about, whether it's again about integrating art directly into the community and 
thinking about what, and because, well, I mean, we can gift all sorts of things to our neighbors, which is like a new way of seeing the world. And sometimes that's an easy gift. And sometimes it's right. It's a more contentious gift that we, we give to one another to make it, make us rethink something that we thought we knew really, really well. Um, but I do think that's not a bad idea. Let me frame that. It's a lovely idea, right? To think about like, what are we doing and how do we put this into the world so that we don't want to, in this way, dictate what we're going to get out of it, right? We're not going to say it has to meet these X criteria because we're worried about blowback from the community. Um, I think it is important that we consider as we do this, is it really clear that we're, what we're giving is artists an opportunity. We're not giving them a site, right? They're, they're dictating that, um, whether that's their yard, their neighbor's yard, they've gotten approval to do that on, that we're not funding them doing something necessarily on city property with this, um, unless they get the approvals to make that happen. Or at least Emily, when I, my sense was, is like, this is like, I have a space in mind, I'm gonna do this. You're just giving me the tools and the means to, to allow that. And by tools and means, we mean like, here's your X number of dollars that's gonna you know, fund the materials and the labor that you wanna spend it on. Well, and I think too, giving people about how do you leverage that, right? So it's a small seed. Are there ways that you can leverage that? Who who can help you in these projects? I think much like the spectacle, you know, when we first started that, I was on, I was at the DDA when you, when, and, and on the arts committee. And it was like, we have no money, but we can invite people to do face painting and we can invite people to bring pumpkins and car, you know, and, and it was all of these small gestures that then led to something bigger that evolved, right? And so I think, um, you know, put like at least somehow suggesting that that might be something that could, something that could happen. I, I don't know if having examples would be useful, you know, like, would you like to see neighborhood projects that happened to other areas of the country? Um, I, I mean, or should we just say like, yeah, this, it might I mean, help. if people ask. It might help guide art, like people who, who haven't envisioned doing a project like this, but they've, you know, or they, they don't know if it's okay. And if they don't know it's okay, they may not apply because they just think, oh, well, this must not be what that is. Being able to have that pool of resources that says, we're not asking you to do this exactly, but here's the kinds of things that could be done um, that might be useful. And one thing I did want to say about the neighborhood, I'm not so committed to literally like quadrating off the like the, the city. Um, I just hope that we do and make sure that it's clear that the invitation isn't just about celebrating one like neighborhood over another. If all the great proposals come from one neighborhood, well, well done them, right? I mean, th th that's uh, part of it. But I just hope that we're good about making it clear that that invitation extends, right? Not just to the college kids' neighborhoods because there's a bunch of art and design students there and not just to um, one particular region in our, in our town. I really I like, like Emily, what you said about engaging, what everyone said about engaging their neighborhoods. You know, cities are really good at, art, artists are great at doing that in bigger cities. And what if these uh, artists were artists that have engaged their neighborhood in their, um, in this proposal will be given, you know, um, serious consideration. Like a part of it is engaging your neighborhood. You know, we're not trying to get neighbors upset with each other. One puts this giant thing in their yard and that the city paid for it. And, you know, and then there's that uh, one that I just found they're doing a creative placemaking. I think they did it today session at, in Lansing. It's called the big car. I believe it's called the big car. And they do these types of efforts in their community. And there were like little galleries and pop up galleries and houses and neighborhoods and some really interesting projects. Yeah, well, uh, like uh, RV museums. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, I, I think that that's kind of the spirit is, uh, you know, you do something, it isn't, it isn't necessarily long lasting, but the other, the other component of this is artists have to be held accountable for um, documenting it and sharing it and also help amplify the promotion of it. I think that that's really important because, and that's something that we as a committee can all do as well, right? To share and amplify and help uh, create energy. Yeah. 
This book is so cute. I ordered it this summer. Well, you know, I teach elementary art too, but my <laughs> kids love it. It's so this. This also ties in right with what Jacob's letter had addressed during public comment tonight. Steve, if you don't have this for your children, it's a good one. <laughs> hey, wall. It's not a wall, it's hey, wall. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's about a community coming together to paint a mural on the ugly old wall that no one liked. So, and uh, in the end, it's it's pretty, it's really cool, so. Okay, so I'll start working on something um, as far as a proposal uh, and requirements. But when is our target? So I'll have something to review. Obviously, we might have to review it a few times. I almost wonder if doing something um, after the new year be just because I feel like we're going into a weird space of, uh, I don't know, pandemic holidays. <laughs> Plus it will present the opportunity of snow. Like, I mean, I mean, there's also people who are thinking about, I mean, there's any number of things that could actually be created when you've got this other resource available that we will have hopefully in, you know, in plenty that could so be- like if we well, yeah, I mean, if we did the call, like if we did the call in January, and what if we did the call in January or February, and then, or say, if the other ones do it going in January, say we do this call in February, and it could take place in March, April, or May. Mm -hmm. The projects could, or, 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 you know, April or May or June or whatever. Yeah. And so that then it's like we had something going into the fall, then we have something going into the spring, summer, and then we have some, a bigger project everything I don't know does that make sense or not do or do you think it should be happening like right now there's so many uncertainties I agree with Tracy just we all could be quarantined again it's just so many uncertainties I, I also I mean I think one for some of this I think it'll be just okay logistically to get it done yes we could get it done but if we're also gonna have to run this past the city I think having a little bit of a buffer is good although does that mean the city, the city commission, did they meet in December? I think they might only have one meeting. So, so but I guess the question is if we could get it, like if we could, if we could craft and then massage that, the thing into something where that we're looking at the January meeting so that we've got time and then like shoot for head hitting their, their whatever meeting they would have in January just to get yeah. end of approval or if not shoot for their February one so that we could then roll it out in that kind of March, April, May time period, or maybe that May, June, July, like, so where are we um, kind of bridge? I mean, I think I, I can days. start working on it and then we can kind of grab, see what happens and then shoot for January, February m approval by the commission and then roll like it out late, to. you know? I feel like- I also am- Sorry, go ahead, Emily. I, I just also am thinking like the January with people not coming, back you know like till much later in january like maybe doing it releasing it in february would be better uh, or or in march when people normally would be able to go on spring break maybe it would be something that they could would bring joy to their neighborhood when they're at home spring breaking mm -hmm. so but that i think that would be so if we could hit that the city takes it through their approval right if we manage to do that in january um, and knowing that for us, spring break will hit in that late February, March that you could put it and then maybe those works do start showing up, you know, in that kind of early, like early to mid March part of that time would be great. And if not, we're, we're moving with it, oh, right? It the timeline yeah. is going to be what the timeline is based off of everything that we're going to run up against in the next four months. So <laughs> is this a project that could somehow, you know, continue to evolve too? Like it doesn't, you know, couldn't it always be? A little bit of an approval in a way like just like the murals down the road like we hope maybe we can do more again and maybe we do this annually or a couple times a year so that i think learn from it you know see see if we have to expand or shrink or give more or less instruction yep i mean i think it would be awesome if we could pull it off twice a year um that would be really cool steve was the point to be all of this happening in a certain week or was it just to say here's the money you can 
you can you could do it in the fall if you wanted to or you could do it in the summer well, i think the idea was to have it within a certain time frame so it had to be you know within a maybe a two month or two month time frame so if there's four projects like you know they they could happen in the same week or they could happen across several weeks i think the artist in the in the proposal or in the the call that i saw we'll call it uh they they proposed a timeline so they they had these proposals and and also the city that looked at the 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 model that i saw um, you know, they would say to the artist, well, um, you do realize like we're only giving you this much money, right? Mm -hmm. And that there are only this many hours in a day, right? <laughs> like it, there, this might not be feasible, although like great idea, maybe that could, you know, this could be step one of, of growing the app, the seed that grows the apple tree. Uh, but, but they, they did, you know, have conversations like, with artists about it so that there was sort of a give and take, not that they were saying, telling them what to do, but also just saying like, wow, that schedule, do you have like superpowers? <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, there was more of a conversation around it. The process was more informal in terms of um, the scope of the proposal, like what people were, the expectation was, the questions were short, um, but that, then, then there was a little bit of conversation afterwards during the project management part that was a give and take, I think. Not that the, not that the city said, oh, you can't do that, but they might say like, oh, like, have you thought of this? Right, well, Em, that's great. If you, and if you get that started, I know I'm the second on that. So just fire me. I'm happy to look at words and I'm good to look at words. So with that, we're at eight o'clock um, and I think our committee reports can hold. I don't think we've got anything looming that that is sort of totally must keep everybody here long for that. So if we can, anybody's got good of the order. Um, before good of the order, I did find the figure that we spent. Okay. Um, we had budgeted $3,300 for uh, words to live by and it turned out to be uh, 22,252. All right, so let's, because I'm a big fan of rounding, call that 25, yeah, right? Because I, I, like, so I like, I like buffers. So if we did say that, so that gives us, if we look at, so we say we'd be fine, we spent 2,500 bucks. That's $3,500 that's, that's sitting there that could potentially be, well, that is in theory slated um, to be used for that. So it's a matter of, do we think about that being like seven, $500 things, or do we um, sort of have, We'll do X number Maybe. of them with a max amount of $1,000, right, for somebody. So if there were bigger projects um, we could consider. So I think there's some considerations to be made there. But that's a great I, um, for us to can, like to be able to think okay. about being able to kick into the community. That's that's really nice. No. Thanks, Tina. All right. Go to the order, order, folk. Anybody? Uh, we're, doing, we're still doing a call for entry for uh, art outside of the museum. Um, it's free to enter and there's, uh, a little bit of cash, uh, for people who are selected to have their work up. It'll be up throughout the winter. Um, so apply before, uh, Monday and we're doing three artist talks next week. Uh, one on Monday at noon, one on Thursday at noon, and then the following Wednesday at noon with three, um, artists who are really showing their artwork a real lot. They were all in North of the 45th. They all have really busy studio practices. And one of them is also a teaching artist. So they're free, they're open to the public. They're only 20 minutes long. So you're not sitting in front of your screen forever and ever. Um, I send the links out with our uh, museum email, but if you're interested and um, you need some links or you want to know more, feel free to email me. And you want people to Thanks. register if they're going to do that? Yeah, I sent out a registration link because uh, the artists are also willing to answer questions, which I think is really great. And doing the registration allows people time to formulate a question that they're not thinking of on bot. And I can provide those to the artist in advance. Um, and I think it helps uh, facilitate a better conversation. 
Um, they're all meeting us in their studios. Uh, I will also right at the last minute, send out the, the well, not right at the last minute, but I'll send out the actual Zoom links and password um, as well. So I'll have another reminder, but I think the, the registration also helps me since it's grant funded. Uh, it tells me who's attending and, and that helps in my grant reporting. So I really appreciate if people uh, uh, register in advance, but it isn't hundred percent necessary. I will. It also lets me know that you're interested and you want the link so I can send it that way too. All right, it looks like we're good. So, all right, Maureen, we'll call it at 8.04 PM, officially on the minutes and y'all have a good night. Thanks again for everybody's good hard work and good, really thoughtful observations and contributions. And I'll see, and we'll see each other and as a group, been about a month. Meeting two again. What? Will we be zooming at our next meeting too? I'm yeah. guessing that, that we're still. Just wanted to verify. Yep, I think as far as we're, we're still and keep everybody safe. Yeah, I wasn't sure mm -hmm. since the library was open if we were gonna no, go back didn't. into that space. Yeah, the city is still closed. Um, so we're all still doing Zoom meetings. So library, we're still considering we're separate facility within the library. All right. Okay. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Good Thank night. you. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks for tracking down that number. That's nice to have that this evening. So we yes. appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone.